All right, we're back. Let's continue. So I'm going to copy every single one of these scripts because sadly scripts are per sprite. So every sprite has its own script. So I'm going to drag this guy and then this guy and then the definitions because we're going to use the bombs explosion and the shooting as well as well as the when I receive blocks so I'm going to bring every single one of them inside the monster bomb sprite and now I need to rearrange them so when I receive level two three four level one when I start as a clone, this is very important, so I'm going to put it here on the right hand side. Then the definitions, so define explode and define shoot every x seconds, right? Then the when flag clicked and the original one I don't need it anymore. Um, I don't have a when I receive level 5, but I need that. So I'm going to create one by duplicating level 4. So right now I have everything. I have the when fly clicked. I have when I receive level 1 to level 4, to level 5 actually. Let me fix that. We have the definitions of shooting every x seconds. We have the definitions for explosions, which uh, will do the same thing. And then we have the code for when I start as a clone. So let's focus on that. So when the bomb starts, as a clone, we show go to the front layer, this is fine. Point in direction, player direction. Well, I need to change that. I don't want the bomb to point in the player's direction. I need it to point in a random direction. So I'm going to go to operators and I'm going to pick random 1, 2, 360. So the bomb will be shot anywhere on the screen. Now, for the loop, I will not use a forever loop. I'm going to use a finite loop. I'm going to do repeat and I'm going to do repeat 15 all right and then I'm going to put the contents of the forever loop inside so I've replaced the forever loop with a finite repeat 15 loop so over 15 repetitions I'm moving 10 steps so the bomb will stop at some point so this last if touching edge block makes no sense anymore so we're moving 10 steps and if touching the player, we're broadcasting player hit and explode and deleting this clone. This is fine. But we also need to start another script starting with when I start as a clone because we need the time bump to explode even if the player does not touch it. So after a number of seconds, the bomb will need to explode on its own. So I'm going to add another script starting with when I start as a clone. Remember, we have multiple scripts starting with when I start as a clone. So every clone will run all of these scripts simultaneously. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to switch the costume to bomb. And then after half a second, I'm going to switch the costume to bomb two. So I'm going to wait for half a second. Then I'm going to duplicate this. Then I'm going to duplicate both of these switches. So bomb, and then I'm going to switch to bomb two, bomb three, bomb four, and then I'm going to add another switch for bomb five. And after all of these switches, after the bomb has finished its time, then it's going to explode and delete this clone. So I'm going to bring in my custom explode block and then I'm going to go to control and I'm going to delete this clone. Good. Now there is another case that we haven't considered. What if the bomb gets touched by the player not when the monster shoots it, but after it's fixed on the stage and before it actually goes off? So the bomb shoots from the monster to someplace on the stage and before it goes off, it's touched by the player as I'm rotating the ship. Well, I need to add another script. So I need to add another when I start as a clone. So quite a lot of simultaneous scripts. So when I start as a clone, I'm going to wait until... So wait until touching the player. 
So I'm going to go to sensing and I'm going to say touching the player. And after it's touched the player, again, I'm going to explode and I'm going to delete this clone. So I'm going to explode and I'm going to delete this clone. But this explosion will also affect the player. So I'll also need to broadcast the player hit message. So broadcast player hit. So notice that we have quite a lot of simultaneous scripts, but all of them are deleting this clone at some point. So the first one to delete this clone is the first one to finish all of the scripts. So no need to worry. All right, so we've done a lot of work. We need to change some things here because we've copied them from the bullet sprite. We'd like the bomb sprite to be generated a little less often. So I'm going to say five seconds, then four, three, two, and one seconds. So the bomb sprite will be generated a little less often and we're ready to play the game. So flag, shoot the monster, trigger the game. So notice we have bullets, three, four, and the fifth, we have the bullet sprite and the bomb sprite here on the stage. If I touch it, it blows in my face. If it hits me, it blows in my face. And if the bomb goes off without me touching it, it blows up on its own. The bomb works great. Good. Now, final thing from this video, we need to make the player actually affected by all these explosions because right now there's no effect. So I'm going to go to the player sprite and I'm going to react to that player hit message that both the monster bullet and the monster bomb broadcast. So I'm going to add a little script with when I receive player hit, I'm going to create a small flashing effect so that we show the player that is being hit. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to set its ghost effect to 100. So it's transparency effect. And I'm going to make it fade in very quickly. So over 10 repetitions, I'm going to change its ghost effect by negative 10. So I'm going to fade in very quickly. So something like that. So if I hit the flag and the monster hits me, see, we have this effect that we're being hit by the monster. So this was easy. Then we need to program the player's life, which is also pretty easy. So when we click on the green flag, first of all, we need to switch the costume to full. So let me go to looks and switch the costume to full. So player life and monster life have the same costumes starting from the green bar all the way down to the very short red bar. All right, so switch costume to full and I want to hide it when I start the application. I only want to show it when I start the level. So I'm going to go to events and when I receive level one, right? And when I receive level one, the only thing that I'm going to do is go to looks and bring in the show block. And that is it. But when I receive the player hit message, which is broadcast by the monster bullet and monster bomb, I will need to decrease the life of the player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little script starting with when I receive player hit. So when I receive player hit, I'm going to run a very similar logic to the monster life. So if the costume number is less than 10, then next costume. Otherwise, then the player is dead. So I'm going to go to the player life and bring in an if else block from the control section. And from the operator section, I'm going to bring in this diamond shape block. So if the costume number is less than 10, all right, so let me go to looks and bring in this rounded costume number. So if the costume number is less than 10, then I'm going to simply go to the next costume, which means decreasing the appearance of the life of the player, right? So I'm just going to go to next costume.
So when I receive player hit, if the costume number is less than 10, the next costume. Otherwise, the player has died. So I need to broadcast a message for that and tell the other sprites that the game is over. And in the space for the else branch, I'm going to go to events and I'm going to broadcast a new message. Game over. Now, there is only one sprite that needs to receive this game over and stop the entire game. So I'm going to go to the messages sprite and I'm going to add a small when I receive game over script. And when I receive game over, the messages sprite will switch its costume to this red one, game over. And it will stop every single script in this program. So I'm going to go to looks and switch costume to game over. Then I'm going to make it display here on the center of the stage. So I'm going to go to motion and bring in the go to block. And I'm going to set x equals to zero and y negative 160 like it is now. And then from the control section, I'm going to bring in this terminal stop all. So let me hit the flag and see what's happening. So play. And I'm going to let the monster kill me. Notice these nice effects, the explosions, and notice that the player's life has decreased. And if the monster hits me again, then game over. All right, you've done an amazing job so far. We need one more thing to declare this game complete, and that is winning the game, which will happen in the next video.